This is a jet-powered RC car. And this is a gigantic runway, moments before I attempted to break a land speed record. In this video, you'll see my first attempt at setting a world speed record with my new version 3 RC jet-powered car to see just how fast it would go on a runway in a remote corner of the UK, where a few times a year, people gather to drive their modern cars as fast as they can. In the last video on Project Air, I showed you how I spent several months building and perfecting a car of my own design using a specially created carbon fibre body shell that would house a powerful miniature jet engine designed for use in RC jet planes. In this episode, you'll see the car going faster and faster, aiming to set a new record to beat 94.76 miles an hour, the speed I achieved with my previous car before it was unfortunately dramatically destroyed before it could set a faster speed. But would would the new car set a new record, or would it crash spectacularly on the first run? In addition to myself and Project Air engineer Emma, who is a full-time member of the Project Air team, by the way, we were joined by Matt from DIY Perks, who would help with documenting the record attempt. And as I'd expected, he was rather impressed with the carbon fibre. Now to very carefully pack up everything into the Project Air MUV and drive four hours to the airfield, where we would be based for the next three days. There's the airfield. Hopefully the weather would be better than the forecast was saying, or else we might not get in any runs at all. The day dawned nice and sunny, but the wind was bringing in worse weather from the sea. It wasn't looking too good. When we got to the airfield, we were joined by the Easy Composites team, who'd made the carbon fibre chassis, as shown in the last video. They'd come along to spectate, which was a little extra pressure for me not to mess up the chassis in front of them. With the tent up, our base camp was ready, and we could attend the all-important driver's safety briefing. But by this point, the wind was now really getting up. The previous record attempt had ended in disaster because I decided to run with a crosswind. But thankfully, this time, the wind was coming right down the runway, which would be much safer. We should be good to go. Just like with real motorsports, the first job was to get the car certified for running. We had to prove to the scrutineers that this thing would actually stop on its own, even if the radio link dropped. And that meant an engine run up and test drive. If the car passed, we could simply refuel and go for the first run of the day through the timing gates. We've got the brakes on this stick, so that means that basically you, in neutral they're on, and then when you want to go, you pull that up and then steer it like that. So then you throttle here. Thankfully, the car passed scrutineering with flying colours, which was a big relief. High five! Oh, <laughs> that was terrible. It was slapping in the face. <laughs> Finally, after months of work, we were now ready to have a go at driving this thing at speed on the runway. My plan was to take it steady, only increasing the throttle to a maximum of 25%. This engine was small, and I didn't expect it to go that fast through the gates on that power. But this would just be a run to check that everything felt good, the steering was trimmed, and importantly, that the car actually registered braking the timing beams. Run number one, let's go. the brakes, the car set off steadily down the runway. I was finding the steering to be a bit twitchy, but generally the car felt stable as it drove along at a fairly modest speed. Applying the brakes, the car stopped almost immediately thanks to the dual discs. At 25% power, the car had travelled only 22 miles an hour through the gates, accelerating to that speed in 200 metres and stopping in just over 20 metres. 
First run complete. <laughs> Although it was looking promising, the car did seem to be quite underpowered. The version 2 car I'd got the 94 mile an hour record with had a 220 size engine, but this car has an 80 size, which was almost a third of the power. The decision had been made to swap to this engine for initial testing to lessen the chances of something going wrong. Maybe this had been the wrong decision though, as we would probably have to do longer runs to get up to the target speed of 94 miles an hour. I adjusted the steering settings and refueled for the next run, which would aim to double the speed of the previous run to around 50 miles an hour. Instead of using a longer run-up at this stage, I would instead use more throttle. We thought this would be the best idea to maximise the speed in this short distance. So, would this next run at more power go smoothly, or would we learn something else? The car had jammed on its brakes and slid through the timing gates. We'd found out the brakes were too sensitive. I think I need to adjust the, uh, the brake bias there. <laughs> well, as long as it's not on fire, I think we're, uh, we're all right. Thankfully, the car didn't overturn, which was quite miraculous. That might have resulted in a lot of damage and might have spelt the end of this record attempt. Get a bit faster than that <laughs> next well, time. So, so far, it's doing exactly what you designed it to do. So. Yes, in indeed. All good. Yeah. Well done. Cheers. Right. So, uh, what's happening at the moment is that we've just uh, basically adjusted the car slightly uh, with its settings, and um, and then we, we're basically waiting for our next run, th uh, run three of the day. I think what happened on the previous run, we got to around. 40, 50 miles an hour, something like that. And then I jammed the brakes on just before the timing gate. So that's why we only got 25 miles an hour on the on the actual official timing. Um, this time I'll just keep the throttle on through the gates, uh, make sure I'm definitely through them and then come to a stop. Um, yeah, and then bring it back again. While I changed the brake bias on the car, the other competitors carried on with their runs, zooming through the timing gates one after another, setting faster and faster times. I was currently the slowest car at the event, but I knew from my experience that every world record has to start from somewhere. And this definitely seemed to be the case for another driver at the event, Steve, who had built an entirely custom electric wheel driven car, which was completely different to every other car at the event. Steve had gone through a heck of a journey to get to this point where he was slowly creeping up on the all out RC car record of 224 miles an hour. Steve had had many setbacks, including numerous moments where it looked like the project was a complete write-off. Now though, after working his way up slowly to 200 mile an hour plus speeds over the course of multiple Rosser events, Steve was finally letting the car rip with everything it had. While I watched from the pits, Steve lined his car up for another go and opened up the throttle. Right, sending it. It was looking very fast. <laughs> yes! Yes! He'd done it. 234 yes. miles an hour. Of course, everyone was absolutely thrilled for Steve. And that's what this event is all about. Friendly competition and engineering. Steve's results showed what hard work can lead towards and demonstrated to me that innovative design could yield big leaps forward. Run three would be my last of day one at Rossa. We planned on using 100% throttle this time to see how much faster it would go at the same 200 meter distance as before. Could I get that 50 mile an hour step up? <laughs>
That run had felt great. The car had remained stable and controllable over its acceleration, and the brakes had this time come on without the rear end coming loose. Ah, well, we got a nice successful run out of that. 50 miles an hour, and uh, yeah, we're all on target. It was time to pack up for the day and go to the pub <laughs> to celebrate a successful first day of running the jet car at Rossa. One, two, three, cheers. We'd only got to 53 miles an hour so far, but it was looking promising. All we needed now was another half decent day of weather. As we started to relax after a successful day of testing, I could thank our preparation and organisation for making sure everything had gone pretty smoothly up to this point. With complex projects like this one, especially when far away from the workshop, you can imagine that every last detail has to be planned. And for this, it's often a good idea to use tools to stay organised. And that's exactly where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Odoo. It helps you to stay organised, manage every detail, and really boost your productivity. Odoo is an all-in-one management software designed to offer entrepreneurs a wide range of applications to simplify the day-to-day -day management of their business, including invoicing, accounting, project management, inventory, website creation, and more. One app I'd recommend to anyone would probably be the Website Builder. It's incredibly easy to use, and in just four steps, you'll have the structure of your website ready in no time. And this is really great for showing off your work. It's very easy to customize your website to exactly how you'd like it with intuitive drag and drop. You can also modify text, images, and colors, as well as animate every element of your site. Pretty cool. You can even create your website for free with Odoo's one app free plan and get unlimited hosting and support. And Odoo will give you a free custom domain for your first year. So if you want to build your online presence, you can start for free right now by clicking the link in the description. The next day was a complete washout, with downpour after downpour. But we did have one more chance to try to get this thing running again at higher speeds the following day, which would be the last day of the three-day event. Thankfully, the final day of Rossa dawned bright and sunny, albeit with quite a lot of water on the runway that would have to dry out. Unfortunately though, our base camp hadn't fared too well with all of the heavy rain. It's wet. Yep. <laughs> On Friday we were only really going from the tower to the timing gates, so this time we're going to go from behind the tower, so over that way, uh, run it over there, turn it around with our manoeuvrable steering, and then have it run through the timing gates from a much further distance away. That will hopefully allow the car to accelerate more and hit a higher top speed. And maybe we can break my old record. Car number 88 on 3S. 88 on 3S, thank you. Traps are ready. The runway was drying out, but the wind was increasing steadily, and soon we had a strong headwind by the time it was my turn to run. Starting a run from further back and facing a gusty headwind could easily cause things to go wrong. One of my primary objectives for this record attempt was to bring the car home in one piece, and I was worried we might not achieve this if the car was pushed too hard too soon. The crash of the previous 2.0 car had been replaying in my mind all weekend, and as you can imagine, I was keen not to repeat this devastating experience once again. By this point, we wouldn't have time to do many runs on this day, as there were a lot of other people running, so we'd really have to go for it if I wanted to break the record. Should I throw caution to the wind and just go all out with a 500 meter plus run up, or should I learn from my previous mistakes and stick to the plan? from the timing gates. We would see what it could do from there.
perfect run. The car had remained on the track despite the gusty wind, the aerodynamics had helped it run perfectly straight, and the brakes had brought it to a safe stop. But now it was time to see if we wanted to run it again. What a relief. Wow, that felt good. That felt really, really good. We're right on target. That's brilliant. The car is working perfectly. I'm so happy. The wind was now around 20 miles an hour and gusting. That previous run had been at 300 meters from the timing gates. And based on our results so far, we calculated that we needed about five to 600 meters of run up to safely beat the record of 94 miles an hour. So more runs would be needed. But these longer run ups in less than ideal conditions would be very risky. A difficult decision was made. The car would not run again at this event. It was a disappointing call and I was gutted not to be running the car at higher speeds. But 69 miles an hour on this car's first time out was actually quite impressive. The car was working and we got loads of valuable information. We could now take it home and scale up to the larger three times the power engine the car was originally designed for. In real land speed record breaking, where everything is being pushed to the very edge, I was reminded that things rarely unfold how you think they're going to. But by learning from failure and taking it one step at a time, even the craziest remote control projects can become successful. Nice one. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Stuart. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much again. What with all of the help from the sponsors, supporters, and everyone else who's helped with bringing this car to life. Take care now. I was sure that the next time we came back to Rossa, this jet would be ready to take the challenge to the big cars. It was finally time to go home, but we would be back. See the traps. <laughs> Here's to the next one. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's been a lot of work um, over about 12 months, pretty much at this point. So if you want to watch another crazy project on Project Air, then make sure to check out this video next. And also subscribe to Project Air down below if you're not already subscribed. Also check out Project Air 2, because there's going to be a dedicated video on the technical aspects of the Jet Car 3.0. I'm glad we still have this thing still in existence after all that hard work. For now, on to the next project. I'll see you on the next one.